Hello, you're watching Eye on Africa. I'm James Creedon. These are our headlines uh, this Tuesday evening. Kenya will vote in a new president next month, uh, but uh, what of the role of women in Kenyan politics? We'll be taking a closer look at that. And in Uganda, we'll bring you a report on efforts to respond to a major hunger crisis in the northeast of the country. And the Ivorian artist Frédéric Brouli Bouabré is being remembered in New York and in Paris with different retrospective exhibitions. More on that later on in the show. Thank you for watching. Now, as Kenya draws closer to the August 9th general elections, uh, the question of the place of women in politics has taken centre stage. Presidential candidate Raila Odinga has chosen a female running mate in uh, Martha Karua. She would become deputy president if they win the election. Now, women have historically been underrepresented in Kenyan politics. Vivian Wandera and Bastien Renoui uh, take a closer look at gender policy and politics in the run-up to the vote. In Eldoret town, politicians billboards grace the streets, but few are for women. Here, Gladys Bolshele is campaigning for a second term in office as a woman representative. This position was created to ensure gender balance in the National Assembly. In the last, uh, this last parliament term, I was a member of the Jubilee Party. The Jubilee Party, in page 30 of its manifesto, said they would implement the two-thirds gender rule in 100 days. It did not happen. The constitution requires the state to enforce a law ensuring that not more than two-thirds of members of all elective and appointive positions are of the same gender. Campaigning countrywide, main political parties claim they want more female representation. Martha Karua, Raila Odinga's running mate, could be Kenya's first female deputy president. An Azimio government will fully imp implement the gender rule, and that will level the playing field for women to some extent. But beyond that, we will also make sure that the policies in place and the awareness drive to get women to have better access to positions of power. Despite these promises, 12 years after the promulgation of the constitution, women are still marginalized. This is the time that it's nigh to push because we see all presidential candidates are really trying to win that women vote. And unless we women also maximize on it and show them that we can say no and uh, show you the door. Even after getting elected into office, women still have a harder time as active politicians. I know that uh, one of my colleagues in parliament, somebody picked a pornographic movie and uh, superimposed her face and it, was, it went viral across the country. And she was a Muslim woman, and uh, her husband walked out on her. So many women would not take the risk to go into politics if that's what happens to you. Out of 1,883 elective positions in the country, women hold only 172 seats. The fate of the bill now lies in the hands of the next parliament. Now, staying in Kenya, there have been calls for a boycott of the election due to soaring costs of living. Prices have been climbing higher due to the knock-on effects of the war in Ukraine and the pandemic. Inflation currently stands at almost 8%. Shirley Sitbon has more. An international food crisis and a drought which has cut down food supplies. This summer, Kenyans have seen extreme difficulties pile up. These protesters are not just angry, they're terrified of not being able to eat as food prices jump. They call their movement the hunger revolution and urge immediate measures to stop inflation. Please bring down the price of flour because without it we cannot cook our ugali or make porridge. Now there is no flour, there is no food and we are hungry. By we, this grandmother is also referring to her 12 grandchildren, who she now struggles to feed. She can only afford one meal per day. Like a number of other Kenyans, she is not planning to vote in August. If you are hungry, how can you walk to the polling center to vote? Other Kenyans also plan to boycott the election, hoping to get candidates' attention. Uh, the average Kenyan is very, very politically aware, very politically engaged, uh, and we achieve high voter turnouts with almost every general election. 
Uh, so when you have a voter registration process in which uh, the, t the, the IABC falls below its target, um, that's, that's new, that's uh, a bit of a concern to be honest. Candidates have addressed voters' concerns with pledges to fight inflation and get them loans. But they haven't outlined how they plan to finance these crucial measures. To South Africa next and a probe into the tragic deaths of 21 young people at a tavern more than three weeks ago. The cause of death remains a mystery. This as a preliminary toxicology report came back inconclusive. Tests found alcohol and carbon monoxide in the victim's blood, but not at deadly levels. This according to doctors at Eastern Cape Department of Health. The lab also found methanol in the blood of all of the victims and further testing is underway to determine the levels. In northeastern Uganda, the region of Karamoja is in the grip of a hunger crisis. People are suffering food shortages uh, caused by drought, pests and insecurity. Over 22,700 children under the age of five are undernourished and in need of treatment. This report by our colleagues at Agence France Presse. Prolonged drought, waves of locusts and African army worms and predatory armed groups have ravaged this impoverished area, leaving no food for people to eat. Nangolelo Pwond, a mother of six, lost her one-year-old child last year. I went to sell charcoal and I instructed the grown child to stay with the small ones until I came back. When I came back, I found out that the child was already dead. What could I do? The family's food mainly comes from wild grasses which grow nearby, but which often cause diarrhea. From time to time, the family also get plumpy nut, a ready-to-use therapeutic food for the malnourished. Malnutrition can have a devastating impact on a child's long-term development. The situation is dire, and authorities are struggling to get to the grips with the scale of it all. In terms of uh, acute malnutrition, in this year we have uh, experienced the worst that we have had in the last 10 years. And uh, we are tracing this back to the issues around climate change. Uh, we have also experienced increasing pockets of insecurity as well as uh, common childhood illnesses. Three years into the crisis, the Ugandan Ministry of Health and the local authorities, supported by UNICEF, are now organizing mass screenings in the area. In this village, the health workers spotted malnourished children, who will now be put in special programs to help them. A week ago, this area was parched. Today it's green, a sign that even a little rain can change nature in an instant. But the problem is timing and resources. The locals say they have nothing to plant now. And it's not just the drought, pests and insecurity that are causing hunger, but also the cost of food. The rapidly rising prices of commodities is increasing the numbers of hungry in this corner of Uganda. Help, say experts, is needed now. Uh, the final of this year's Women's Africa Cup of Nations will be between hosts Morocco and South Africa. Morocco qualified for the final by defeating Nigeria 5-4 to four in penalties. Nigeria won the tournament last time round. Now this year's final will be played this Saturday in Rabat at the Prince Moulay Abdallah Stadium. South Africa uh, were the favourites uh, going into the tournament and are hoping uh, for their first victory uh, in the tournament so far. Now, next up, a focus on an Ivorian artist whose body of work is currently being celebrated at the MoMA in New York. The exhibition is called Frédéric Brully Bouabré, World Unbound. Now, the artist who died in 2014 was best known for his drawings, which have been described as deceptively naive uh, and with a very personal use of colour. Now, and in, in an echo of that major retrospective in the US, French art dealer André Magnan is uh, showing his collection of the artist's work at his gallery here in Paris. Now, Magnan was a decisive figure in bringing Brully Bourbray's uh, vision to a global audience. Leo Mugain and Julien Sauvager went to meet him to find out more. A few lines, almost childlike, on a piece of cardboard designed to look like a postcard. An example of just some of the unique works of Ivorian artist Frédéric Brully Bourbray 
They are part of an exhibition set up by collector André Magnin in his Paris gallery. He had a table in front of his house. It was his encyclopedic desk, and from there he observed the world. The clouds, chicken footprints. Look at these chicken footprints imprinted into the ground. Magnin, who is credited with discovering the African artist, set up the exhibition in parallel to the one at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Poivre was an anthropologist, ethnologist, religious scholar, poet, storyteller, sociologist. He was kind of a self-taught scholar, interested in everything. When André Magnin met Bouabré, almost unexpectedly, in 1988, he was traveling through Africa in search of new talent for a collector called Jean Pigozzi. The meeting left a deep impression on him. It was a kind of illumination. An old man came out, he was expecting me. It was like a ray of light coming out, and I felt at that very moment that something was going to happen. Frédéric Bruly Bouabré decided to devote his life to his work following a divine vision. He wrote nearly 130 manuscripts before transforming his thoughts and observations into drawings. He transferred the thousands of little pieces of knowledge he had accumulated since the 1940s in his manuscripts onto smaller cardboard boxes. Discovered and recognized at 70 years old, Bouabre's work was displayed all over the world until his death in 2014 at the age of 91. He wasn't searching for recognition, but the world drank in his knowledge. An extraordinary artist. His legacy lives on. Beautiful stuff. That brings us to the end of uh, tonight's Eye in Africa. It was produced by Laura DiBasio. Thanks to her and all the team, and thanks to you for watching. Good night. Because 